welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. I'm super excited about this episode because today I would like to try something new and I'm really interested to understand if you like it. It has something to do with this item over here and in addition I will also review this puzzle over here and try to solve it later after the spoiler break. Before I continue looking more in detail on these two items, I would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and supporting my channel. More details about Squarespace and how you personally can benefit from them at the end of this video. So these two puzzles here are called Tumbler and Double Tumbler. This one I reviewed two weeks ago and this one is the more difficult version of this puzzle here. Okay, so they basically look the same. But this one has in addition, not only the lid that can be twisted on the bottom, but also in addition, this little additional cylinder on the top, which can be also twisted. Basically, both puzzles sound the same. There are some bearing balls inside and I already have an idea how to solve this one. And later after the spoiler break, I'm gonna try it. In addition, I would like to show you today this product here. It's a scientific toy. I will just place a sheet of paper below that you can see it better. It's the so-called hand boiler. Today I would like not only to show you this scientific toy, and I would also like to explain you a bit the physics behind how this works. Don't be afraid, I will not write down here some formulas and stuff. I would like to explain you in a very basic way why this toy does what it does if I touch it. And what happens and why it's called hand boiler is if I just grab this item down here, the liquids will start to raise until the top and then it will, after a certain time, it will start boiling. You see this? It's a super cool effect. The liquid will start boiling. And if I will release it, after some time, the liquid will start to flow back into the compartment down here. But what happens here? So first of all, according to the manufacturer, this bottle is filled with air and the liquid here, according to the box, comes in this box here, is ethylene, which is basically alcohol. So I also read on another website that this is um, dichlormethane, which is a highly hazardous substance. This is not the case. This is just simple, plain ethylene, okay? But how does it work? So imagine what we see here. Down here, where the fluid is inside, is basically a bottle. In our case, this red liquid okay so i will mark this here as being a liquid what you have to imagine now is this liquid somehow need to be pushed upwards okay to flow up here there's no vacuum or anything inside it it's just air in both compartments so something need to be added into this system now it's in a so-called let's say stable state nothing will change but when we touch it it starts to change and the liquid starts to be pushed upside the straw. This bowl over here, there is a certain pressure. Let's call it P1, okay? And also a temperature T1. Up here, I will, I will leave this all this stuff away because it doesn't matter. Up here is another sphere and there's also pressure P1 and T1. And also the ambient temperature and pressure right now is P1 and T1. So everything is now in a stable state. To change this state, we need to get energy inside the system. And how can we do this? Well, we just touch it because our hands are warm. They are warmer than the surrounding air and they are warmer than the air in, trapped inside this compartment. So if I touch it, I will warm up the air inside this bottle. If I warm it up, the pressure will increase. But why will the pressure increase? What is pressure and why does it increase? If we warm up the air inside, you can imagine it the following way. The air consists out of small molecules and these molecules are in constant motion. So one is flying over here right now, one's flying over here, There's another one down here and one over here. They're flying around constantly all the time. But if I bring more energy into the system in form of heat, they will increase the speed. And these molecules flying around are actually creating the pressure because these molecules have a certain mass and they have a certain speed. And there are many, many, many of them inside this bottle. So each time a molecule is bumping against a glass bottle, since it has a mass and a certain speed, it will transfer a momentum. And if you take the sum of all these molecules inside flying around the bumping against the inner side of this glass bottle, you have a certain pressure inside. Right now, the pressure is the same as on the outside and in the upper compartment. So from everywhere, the molecules will bump with the same 
force. The key now is to add additional energy, which I do with my hand in form of heat. The molecules will start to increase their speed. It means they are bumping more molecules from the inside in this compartment against the glass bottle than from the outside or from over here downwards. That means we increase the pressure in this bottle. The glass will go nowhere, it will just stay in position. But what will happen is that this increased pressure will press also here on the surface of this liquid and it will press it downwards. The liquid will start to float inside here and the level of this liquid inside this tube will raise based on the pressure. So the more pressure, the more the liquid will push pushed upwards. And there's another thing that will influence this. The bigger the bottle down here is, the bigger will be the surface of the liquid that's pushed downwards. So the higher and faster this liquid inside the tube can raise up here. If all of this liquid is pushed down below this ending of the straw, it will push in air and this makes it bubbling later and looking like it's boiling. This is basically how it works, the very very basic physics how this works. So again, if I touch it, we now understand better what's going on. The lazy molecules are floating and chilling inside this bottle right now, floating and moving very slowly. If I add some heat, they will increase the speed. They will start to press more, more molecules will now hit the lower surface here of this liquid will push it downwards. It will slowly start to raise while the temperature here is still increasing and it will push everything upwards. And as soon as the liquid here is low enough, it will start to push air also inside and the liquid from here will start to float back and forth. And this will create this boiling effect. This is basically how this works. And we can also see that it also works very well other way around. So if I hold it here in the middle, the liquid will start to float back, but very slowly. But if I now grab this side of the bottle, I will heat up this side and it will instantly be pushed back by the heat of my hand that is increasing the pressure now inside here. And here we go. You see how fast this went back? Because now it was also supported by gravity, it will instantly flow back. So just let me know in the comments if this was interesting for you, if it was understandable. I'm really interested to get your feedback. And this is what we continue with now. Another puzzle, which is the double tumbler puzzle here. I gonna review today after I reviewed some weeks ago this one here and I'm really excited about this one. And we will see if my knowledge I gained here by solving this one will help me to solve this one as quick as I expect. Okay, so let's just check out this puzzle here and see if I can benefit from what I learned before by solving this one. Let's just start with this puzzle and let's have a first look. If I twist it down here, it seems this time, and this is different than before, it seems this time I'm twisting, if you remember, if I twisted this one down here, I twisted here a cylinder inside. You can see this notch that was milled inside the cylinder here. I'm twisting this complete cylinder that's going up here, while on this one, the cylinder seems to be hollow, actually, and inside there's another cylinder that I can twist this small cylinder up here. So there's a cylinder in the cylinder. Let me just draw this again, this time from the beginning, that we can all understand what I'm talking about. So it's, it's, it's getting very confusing now, but I think you got the point. There's a cylinder coming from up here, it seems. There is a, another cylinder, which is hollow, coming from here. So these are inside of each other. And then there's a third cylinder containing this notch where the balls can come through. If all of these three are aligned, then probably the ball can travel through in the lower compartment. And this is what I'm gonna do now. I will pick this side here with this cutout, because on this side, I'm able to see in the best way so to look in the best way inside it has a cutout down here, a cutout up here, and therefore I can look in a certain angle inside and get some overview of what's going on inside. First align the notch, there's no marking down here, this is kind of difficult. And I will align also the second cylinder that's running inside with this one. I, about, I now align both of them, you can see it in high, inside here. So this is the notch in the outer cylinder. Now they are aligned. Ah, this one is in the wrong position. There's 
no cut out visible right now but I will just twist it now it's in the right place so this is the right position for the cutout okay all of these three need to be lined and now if I flip the this are, these ball bearings are running around here in these two notches I painted over here if I now move them over here pull this up and stop them in this place if I'm correct and aligned everything properly a ball should now drop down which did not happen so I will try again <laughs> and here we go I think there is now a ball that dropped now a ball down here and there's now a ball down here inside number one I will try now in the same way to free the other balls I still got only one ball out so maybe it's not as I expected. The first one came instantly out. The second one does not come out now at all. Yes, yes, it's definitely one, only one cut out in the center cylinder. Now we got another ball down again. It's hard to see, but I think I have two balls right now. It seems to be perfectly aligned right now. The additional tube seems to make it much more sensitive. Not sure how many balls I have right now down here in the compartment. At least two, because I can't see them. That's maybe an idea. I will do it the other way around. I will try to drop one ball inside, and if I drop it inside, I probably should not be able to twist this one anymore. I might be able to verify if, there, if there's a ball dropped inside. So let me just try that. Drop them in. Now it's blocked, so I should be able. Yes, one came through. Now it should be three. Clamp them. Oh yes. Now it came out here again, partially. This is only possible if one ball remains. And this was also a nice feature. So there's only one ball up here right now. Just try to align them again. I need to be careful that I will not drop the balls back. Yes, here we go. And whew, this was this was really difficult to get out the last one. Again, we have four balls, same as before. We have the cylinder inside here with a notch that need to be aligned with this notch on the big cylinder. And then we have a third hollow cylinder over here with another notch, as you can see here. And these three need to be aligned. Otherwise, the ball can't pass through here. This notch is actually exactly on top of this hole so it should be possible if I pull it out into this position ah okay I pull it out in this position okay now I got it yeah if I pull it out in this position the ball cannot really drop inside in this in this condition you need to hold it like here because if I hold it in here the ball will be located beside the hole and will probably drop back if I hold it like so it will not immediately drop back to one or another side, but it will also start to roll here and it will roll inside. Let me just confirm this with one ball. I locked the puzzle again, so now it's only with one ball. I will align all the three pieces. So this should be okay, more or less. And now let's see if my theory is right. If I put it over here, I should be able to pull it out. Yes. And now it's beside the hole. If I will release it now, it will drop to one or another side. So I need to hold it like so to make it drop inside the hole. Now it should be slightly blocked. Yes, it is. And now I can roll it down in the lower compartment and open it up. Yes, the understanding was right. It's a pretty cool puzzle, same as the other one, definitely. It, I would not actually call this one more difficult than this one. It's pl pretty clear what to do right from the beginning, but this one is a little bit more difficult to execute because of the third 
sleeve here or the third notch that need to be also aligned. It's a nice combination of a challenging puzzle and a dexterity expect, so definitely worth to get it. Links in the video description to these two puzzles, also to the hand boiler of course. As announced in the beginning of this video, I would like to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. If you ever thought about creating your own website for business, hobby or, or just for fun, you have to check out Squarespace because they make it easier than ever before without any programming or stuff like that to build your own website. Just pick one of the award-winning templates, customize it with your content. They even provide you the possibility to manage email campaigns to unify your brand voice between website and email to have them look in the same style and you can even add online schedule and booking features to offer courses, enable potential clients to see your availability and so on. And the integrated website analytics keep you informed about the trends and traffic sources which help you to optimize your content based on your audience. Interested? If yes, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash mrpuzzle to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring my channel. That's it pretty much for today. I hope you liked this episode. It was definitely a challenge that was harder than expected to solve this puzzle. It was really enjoyable even knowing this one before. This one was absolute worth trying it. I hope you liked my explanation of this one. Let me know in the comments. And until next time, keep on boiling.